Hi, this is Brian from iWire, and this is part two of our comparison between our STI and six cylinder projects. In part one, we tuned the six cylinder best we could, and Dyno comparisoned it to the STI totally stock, no modifications, no tune, nothing. So check part one to see that comparison. This is part two after we dyno tuned the STI as well to see what improvements we could make over the stock setup. And we found that this is where the comparison starts to favor the STI. What, uh, what do these graphs show you? So the STI, we did a baseline pull, your car was bone stock. Yeah. That kind of gives us an idea where that car is bone stock to compare to the RS with the, the H6 swap. Of course, then we tuned it because you twisted my arm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. But yeah, just one of our stage one tunes that we did. So we went ahead and cleaned up all that area. And you we know, were up to 245 and 278. The biggest thing like I always like to harp on, you know, I was telling you earlier is not peak power. Peak power is literally these numbers and it's there for like a millisecond on the dynograph. That 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 tells you what the peak numbers is, but it's not the overall what the car's doing. Right. The average power that you get over the curve. So if we took an awesome crayon and we shaded in all this area right here, that's your big gain that you see on the car. So 99% of the people that drive a car, they're gonna drive here. Right. This is all you're gonna use. And so you, you gain it. from right here, this is on peak power, was 160 on this part and 160 torque. And then same area, we're all the way up to above 200 and we're up to almost 270 compared to where it was down here, like almost, what, probably 210? Just, yeah, just So two. that that gap and change in torque and power, that's what you're really gonna feel. You're not gonna feel that, you know, 245 at this little spot. I mean, yeah, you probably will right. a little bit, but this is where you see the big change in the car. Gotcha. So that's why I like to always harp on average power. Yeah. The big thing, like, I, I try to always break it down to customers is you can have two cars. Both of them make 300 horsepower. Right. The car that has the highest average is going to win the race. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you can have a car that literally has a downograph that comes up and makes 300. Right. Or you can have a car that comes up <clears throat> and makes 300. Right. The car that swings up this way, that's the car that's going to win. Right. Highest average always will win. Just the dyno tune on access port, stock everything else, we gained 20 horsepower and almost 50 pound feet of torque between 3 and 5,000 RPM, which is where you care about it. And at this point, stock for stock ish, the six cylinder gets blown out of the water by the STI. So we compared a bunch of categories to try to get a sense of the difference between an STI and a six cylinder swap. So the first one would be aftermarket parts and support. Hands down, this is STI. Everything that you could dream of is available off the shelf and bolt on. The six cylinder, pretty much everything is going to be custom. There are a few exceptions to that. You can get motor mounts, you can get headers. If you're going beyond that, it's pretty much all custom stuff. Sound, sound, six cylinder. Uh, you can't beat that. The, it sounds amazing. Uh, once you tune it, stock for stock but tuned, the STI hands down wins in torque, both at low end and high end. If you look at the where the six cylinder is tends to be considered a torque monster, this STI has it beat, no problem in the low end. If not equal, then it beats it in the later end when the turbo spools. Um, so horsepower and torque for stock, six, six cylinder loses to the STI. In terms of emissions and bar, six cylinder has to be done with the standalone. So you better live in an area where this is not a problem. The STI, you can definitely make pass uh, bar or smog wherever you live. Uh, that's not a problem because we can use the stock EC with that platform. If you have a specific use, so uh, the 
uh, US Rally has changed the rules so that NA displacement can be up to three liter. That is an area where the six cylinder may be a huge benefit because you can stay within your class, but increase your horsepower dramatically. Um, autocross might be another example of that, or if you have a specific use, six cylinder might have its place. Basically, once you start doing the horsepower to dollar numbers, up to 500 horsepower, I don't think the six cylinder stands a chance against the STI due to available bolt-on parts. STI block, you know, people will say it has this problem and that problem, that's fair. But probably into the mid 400s, you can run it on an STI stock block. So somewhere between five and 600 is where we kind of don't know. Um, we're thinking that it depends on your project. Uh, both engines would need to be built, so costs are probably about the same depending on which six cylinder engine you get. Probably in this range, the six cylinder build is gonna be more expensive than just a slightly upgraded STI build. Um, but once again, factoring in the turbo kit costs and all the customization that would be required for a six cylinder setup to get to this number, I think you're still in STI range here, but we mark these as even because it's hard to say between five and 600. Where the horsepower to dollar math starts to weigh in favor of the six cylinder is probably over 600 horsepower. The logistics of building a four cylinder with a big enough turbo to spool at 600, you probably can build an STI, uh, six cylinder engine, turbo kit, fuel system, and have the displacement to spool that larger turbo, probably at somewhere above 600. So. If you are serious about building a project above 600, the math might start turning in favor of the six cylinder at this point, but you're talking serious dollars to spend to do this. The RS is too nice of a chassis to start cutting holes for front mounts um, and custom fabbing things. So we'll probably stop here with our six cylinder project in this RS but stay tuned, we're gonna put it in something else that's more fun. Um, and probably go back to an STI because of all of this. I wanna make that car bar legal. I want to be able to mod it easier. I wanna keep a top mount, which is super important on that car because I'm not wanting to cut things. We would say that for most projects, where we got to with this six cylinder is where you would likely to get given budget because the cost to get the six cylinder to this point and an STI swap are about the same. If you were budgeting it, you'd probably guess somewhere between six and $8,000, depending on what engine you could find and what your skills are to do this yourself. Um, so that's why I say, we say that an STI and a six cylinder built the way it is in this car right now are about equivalent and hands down the next step to make more power is going to favor the STI in that car. So that's why we recommend for most people that the STI swap, given this kind of budget, is going to be a far better option than the six cylinder. We know that there will be a lot of people that disagree. There's a lot of lo six cylinder love and four cylinder hate and vice versa. We get that. We're trying to stay unbiased as best we can, given our project. So comment, let us know what you think. And if you have a six cylinder project that you wanna do, call us, we're happy to do it. We just want people to be aware of the pros and cons of both swaps. And of course, follow us, like, subscribe, tell your friends how great this video is and how much you learned about six cylinders and STIs. Fork, fork. <laughs>